All right. Does that look good? <laughs> Hello, everybody. Let's see if this is working. I'm alone here. All right. So, I look good. Okay, good. All right, cool. It's working, right? It's working. You guys hear me? All good? Let me see, I have my, I'm following the chat here. Let me check video and sound. Uh, how about this? Huh? Yeah? Uh, right? I'm using my, my iPhone, so... Okay, looks and sounds great. Perfect. Hey, Dave. Alright, so... Um, how... So, uh, difficult times, huh? Crazy times, crazy times. So, I'm here Sunday night in Europe, Finland, and I decided to talk about um, mastering the fretboard just a little. I was practicing and then I decided to talk to you guys. And uh, let me know here uh, how hard it is for you to, to like, to really visualize and see the whole fretboard so I, I'm reading here so let me know um, how you know how you guys think about this you know let's say you have a tonic but then you want to solo here but then suddenly you go here then you have to, do, to jump to this area to play here or here or here you're not really you don't master the whole fretboard so let me let me read uh, uh, what you guys think about this pretty difficult um, so how to work with fourths intervals um, so yeah, let, let me know about the fretboard, it's just a pattern, but hard to understand. So, also, when you practice the modes, so let's say, like D major, right? practice up and down or do you have other ways to practice this let me know um, yeah so actually I was thinking about to do some videos on, on the channel uh, about the interval so I don't know how you guys think about um, but that's not really to play very fast you know because it's first you have to visualize but uh, for me what really helped uh, back in the day when I was uh, learning and practicing patterns was um, a thing that I think helps a lot for you to, to 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 really visualize the whole fretboard but now I just want to really um, read a little bit of the comments here uh, to put back in track to okay so Matt Evans said the best way is to put the mode uh, the back in track and just play the modes um, and identify the, the notes and the intervals right by ear which would uh, of course is a great it's a great way to do it but the thing is I, I will add to this um, practice because when you're improvising uh, the best way to to get your best is not to judge yourself. You you cannot judge yourself. So you have to close your eyes and you know uh, play. But the problem is uh, if you don't practice like uh, some things, 
uh, exercise that I'm going to show in a moment, uh, you might improvise always in the same place, you know, because you know you're going to find your comfort comfort zone. Let's say I don't know, like um, uh, E minor. <laughs> Then you're gonna find some little spots here that is a comfort zone, and then you're probably gonna be there all the time. So, and uh, so that's why if you only play with backing tracks, it might be that if you don't do other kinds of practice, you might be playing the same thing over and over and over for years. You know. So um, let's talk about this. But um, let me read more. Uh, and uh, yeah, a lot of stuff. There's many ways. I, I, I see, uh, I, I memorize the fretboard in many ways. I'm gonna tell here, in this video, one, one way to practice. Okay, one of the ways to practice. Of course, one way is up and down. Like all the seven, you know, the seven shapes. Um, and then you just go up and down, up and down, you know, and then you put some backing tracks in and practice this. The way I do, another way, would be the getting to know the intervals. And this is going to be for another life. Uh, because it takes, uh, it has to be like a, a five hours live. Or I might, my idea would be to do different videos on, on the channel. Um, maybe I start doing it, but uh, just the last few weeks it was crazy. Crazy for everybody, so... Um, I didn't do much stuff regarding my channel, but anyways. So my my idea here is to show ah, another another thing. I want to know. I want to know. Um, um, I want to know. I'm reading here. That's why I'm alone here, so it's hard. Um, how hard it is for you guys to synchronize both hands if you have this thing of like. <laughs> super fast with the right hand and then when you you know add the left hand is it doesn't sound that they're synchronized you know it doesn't sound some some ghost notes here but uh, you feel that you're playing at least like yeah, 95 percent of the notes. Uh, <clears throat> so just uh, my friends in uh, a message in português. Eu não vou falar português em nenhum momento. Eu vou fazer outro vídeo só em português. Beleza? Então, por favor. So, I'm just saying, I'm going to be full on in English. In another moment, I can do uh, in Portuguese. So, alright. So, so, to get this, for me, that really worked, uh, synchronizing both hands, are those uh, simple, simple exercises, simple patterns, that you see a lot of uh, Malmsteen, Ingrid Malmsteen doing a lot. And I think it's really, really powerful if you put this in your routine. Actually, I have my program, guitarhacks.com routine, uh, but I can talk about this later. So that's part of the routine, is playing per string, okay? So let's say, let's start, um, um, let's say you're gonna do G major, right? So you have to write down or memorize, and uh, after a while, it's gonna be by ear as well, and then you're gonna visualize that. So you're gonna combine those, uh, you know, put all together those dots, right? So uh, the sound, the knowing the distances of the intervals. So a major scale is, is um, whole tone, whole tone, half, half, half step. Whole step, whole step, whole step, and half step, right? Um, so you memorize that, you can write down. You will s visualize that in one string so you're gonna see like a piano. Because the piano is much easier to see it, right? 
So you're going to see it like a piano. <laughs> G major. One, one, two, three, go. Third, fourth, fifth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and then octave, and then repeat. Like so. Then now you practice a, a pattern, and it can be a simple thing like. Too high, all right. Sorry, uh, let's see now. Everybody's come. Okay. No problem. I'm, I'm alone here doing this, so you um, never know. Better? Is it better now? Alright, so. I'm just doing a live with my phone, man. So I just want to uh, uh, interact with you guys. I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm not at home, so I don't have a like a, a lot of gear. So, anyways, but um, actually, I could do something here. So let me do. It. Let's see if it works. Just a second. It might be. I don't know if it, this is gonna work if I connect now. Is it better now? Is it better? Worse. No. Okay. So never mind. So I uh, like have a like a little mic here. Anyways. So so have some patterns that you can do it right. So uh, this one here. Very simple. Very simple, and uh, you can complicate it a little bit more if you want. So, but it is difficult to do one, two, three, one, two, three, and change. So um, that's a simple exercise, but I know when I ask people to do that, it's a mess. You know, most of the time, of course, it's a mess, or because of the transitions. It might be easy to do, but when you move for the next position, it's not, there's no, it's not synchronized. So then it starts to be very messy, you know. So the best way is to um, disconnect, right? So you, you wait. And then. So then at some point you. you try to be so just play the 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 lick of six notes and then the next note so practicing the transition okay and always very conscious about 
if you can hear all the notes, you know, it's not a... And never, you don't need to play fast. You have to teach your fingers how to play, so they need time to learn and they need to, to, uh, to play slowly, to learn, you know, so... Uh, and then... And slowly you start increasing the phrase, right, and until you get the transition, and then, and then the third one, the same thing. Uh, for the ones that are part of my uh, Guitar Hacks program, they know because I insist on this, right, I insist on, on the or like uh, stopping and uh, playing slowly, of course. Um, you, you will have time to play fast anytime you just put a backing track and just go crazy and uh, enjoy music. But when you're practicing, you have to have some rules so you can, you know, go to the next level. Right? Now we're we're we're, uh, uh, we're trying to synchronize things. So I'm, at the same time I'm pra I'm practicing at the same time I'm practicing the scale, the, the shape. I'm seeing as a piano, like right, like linear here, you know, horizontally. I can see um, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, right. So I can see that and I, I'm practicing the technique. So now, let's say another pattern. This pattern is like six notes, right? One, two, three, five, six, one, two, three, four, groups of three. And then, of course, you can do uh, groups of four. That could be one, two, three, four, now the next. Same thing. Oops. Right? Practice the transition and then next transition. So it's like you adding, you know, the phrase is very short and then you add the next uh, position, then the next position, then the next. You get you start to get very comfortable with that and then you can play and then probably probably you encounter another problem which is it might be that hands there fly, is flying you know that your left hand is flying is, is playing fast but you you don't have time to think about the scale you know, so then uh, it might be that you don't play as fast because you, you cannot see the, the next note. You don't think as fast. So it's more about how fast you can think. Right? Um, so now the next thing is somebody said here, Mathieu. The next thing, of course, would be playing the same thing in all, the, in all the strings before you go to another scale. And I will show you that uh, one of the main things, knowing the patterns, let's say we're gonna use those two patterns, not, not to have things very complicated here. Of course, you can uh, do other combinations. You can do one, two, three, four, five, six. can do all the combinations, but let's stay with the uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Very basic, very basic, but there's never a problem to practice basic fundamental stuff. And then, um, again, the, 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 the Guitar Hacks program, I'm like really into like 
let's go that's fundamentals basics and if if you see any musician uh, or um, high performance athletes or something they're always practicing the basics because that's the foundation of everything you know if you don't have those basic movements um, there it's gonna be hard to start doing whatever streaks string skipping or crazy legatos and things like this or like super arpeggios you have to have the, those basic foundations you know so it's never enough to uh, to practice in your in a daily basis a little bit of those foundations okay so that's my mantra that's what I always say is to, to the to the students um, so now uh, all the strings so here you have so if, if you have uh, uh, if you cannot see here you can go to the same note and find the G here right so you start practicing uh, comparing right uh, both uh, strings so right and then here's the G so here same note doesn't matter how long it takes for you to find the G. So G, G. So whole tone, whole tone, whole tone, half, whole tone, Synchronized, and I can see the major scale here. G is here, third, fifth, and then. do like okay is if it's very hard for you to do that you can every day you practice one string and then try to every day you know start in the first string and practice for some time next day second string then the first and the second then the first the second the third and then you keep adding until you know how to do how to play over the uh, horizontally uh, using six strings so let me see a little bit of what's going on here um, can you play with your eyes wide open? <laughs> um, yeah, the thing is, uh, somebody asked us a lot, of, a lot of, um, a lot of questions here. How you can ragav uh, misra? How did you make your left hand movement so economical? My left hand. I try to be very economical with my uh, right hand as well. So let me. I have to be here. Yeah. Um, basically, basically, is playing very slowly and paying attention of the beauty of the movement, right? Because some guitar players, I love to listen to them, but I don't like seeing them because it's kind of is weird. Um, and I really like when this, there's a beauty, when the so elegance, you know, um, you know, like Stevie or you know, like Malmsteen, like pure control, you know. So of course, when I was practicing si simple things like this, 
it's simple to understand, but it's, it, it might not be that simple. I, I will show more stuff using the same pattern. So it can complicate, you can make things more difficult. But of course, if I'm doing this, why I will play, try to play fast with a crazy hand movement? I will, I will play very slowly and I will pay attention and how far uh, I need to move this finger for to play this other note. So, do I need to go here? No, I don't need to. What is the minimal movement? Let's see if I can see uh, if I can see better. Maybe here. You know, if you play fast, it's gonna be impossible to control your your hands, your fingers. Impossible. So of course, you have to play very slowly and try to control. Like, you know, you have to. But it might be very boring to. It might be very boring to play slow all the time. I understand that and I get it. And of course, I was always uh, playing with the albums and uh, backing tracks uh, and whatever. But you have to have a, a period, a time in your day that you focus on those things. And slowly you will get control. And when you're improvising and when you're shredding, whatever, you oh, you try to you know, remember those things, it's like, oh, my fingers, so let me play like a slower phrase trying to control the fingers, you know, so yeah, that, that's the only way, and uh, to, to teach your fingers how to move, it takes time, you know, it's a process, you know, it's not like in a, in a month, okay? <laughs> So uh, let's say uh, that pattern, the other one. One octave. Uh, one octave. And from here. Now I can see the G here, I can see the G here. One, two, three, the third, four, five, the fifth, six, seven, octave. So if you can, while practicing, try to see, oh, this, that's the first note, the G, that's the second, A, B, you can maybe uh, say the name of the notes, A, B, C, D, or the intervals, or N, the intervals, so root, third, fifth, one, two, three, third, four,
um, you you move your thumb a lot of your picking against the mo I, I mean like my thumb and the right hand I'm moving here yeah. I'm left-handed so my right hand I don't know it's a bit uh, awkward um, So somebody asked how I can practice the scales, my sweet engage. So uh, yeah, so that's one of the ways, one of the ways to practice horizontally. And you learn the, the intervals, the spaces in between the notes and you try to memorize whole, uh, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So two whole step, one half step, three whole step, one half step. That's the major scale. And then you memorize that and you try to see this as a piano. You can see easily on the piano. So here you try to do the same thing. That's what I said in the beginning. So, so you, you get one of those patterns and try to synchronize both hands and play on every string. And I know it takes time, it's not to do like I just did in a few minutes, I play the whole, uh, the whole Mac using the G major scale, but you can practice every day one string, you know, and then you get slowly, you, you start to memorize and combine everything that you play, right? Um, so, um, so now, so let me see a little bit more. So, uh, because again, you have to you have to have your moment that you practice is a focused practice it's not a diffuse practice the diffuse practice is your when you improvise you play with the backing track you put an album a, a song that you love and just play along and then you just feel the music and then that's that's what you have to do most of the time but you have to have a moment half hour one hour on my program, I teach how to do that in one hour. It's one hour. So take an hour, and if you're a beginner, you can just do everything in half, and then you play half hour. If you're a beginner, do it half hour, or whatever. If you don't have time that day, you do half hour. But that's what I do if I have to prepare myself for a tour, or if I, have, if I didn't play for those, like, I don't know, two days off, and then I didn't touch the guitar, and the next day, you have an important concert. That's what I do. I was like, okay, give me my guitar for one hour and I go through this program. One hour. That's it. And then I feel much more confident. Because technique is about conf being confident. So if you're confident, you can, you can go on stage, you can improvise better. And you're confident. when you're confident, you feel free. And then when you feel free, your creativity feels free as well, so like it's better, you know, because the the hand movements they're happening, you know. So um, the the musicians that experience that they know what I'm talking about, and you have to trust and believe me that the more you pay attention on your technique for a specific time during the day, like as I said, half hour, one hour uh, session. If you have more time, if you have many hours, if you want to play eight hours a day, you might do this session for two, two times, maybe three times. But you have so many things to practice in music and compose and rehearse. And um, so, you know, you can... What I'm talking about is one hour is enough. Because it's very focused, They're like really paying attention in every movement. So that's what I'm talking in my program. So how to practice. And then you're ready to really... Uh, you, you're gonna be ready to know how to practice and things are gonna be better and faster you're gonna learn faster anything all right so now so I gotta keep using those two simple patterns this one and uh, six notes right one, two, three, four. and one, two, three, four. and groups of four easy stuff but you can't complicate if you start changing the modes and trying to memorize other modes, right? So first you're gonna play in one string, 
Then you're gonna uh, try to play the same both patterns and all all six strings. Now it's time. You have two ways to practice. You um, change the key so ev everything that you kind of memorize. You know, if you if you're using those little dots here, forget about it. You know. Um, so let's say if I want to play, um, I don't know, B flat, B flat major. So I'm here, G major, and then B flat major. B flat is here. It shouldn't be a problem to change the key and play the same thing, right? So. Same thing here. Uh, this is B, so the B flat would be here. So this is the second or third, this here, fourth, fifth, B flat here. So. Right? B flat here. Playing B flat now, and if you tell me, okay, uh, F sharp, F sharp, same thing. So you see, half, whole step, whole step, whole step, half. the F-sharp major, and then you can, you know, 12 keys, no problem, I can do the same thing, you know, A flat, A, A major, A, so it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, so you're free to play in any key, cool? Let me see here some comments. No, a lot of a lot of comments. <laughs> thanks, thanks a lot for the comments. Um, can can you give me a tip how to pick faster? Um, that's I'm telling you right now. Because one thing is to pick faster, the other thing is like to to be able to see the scale as fast as you play. Otherwise, you be you be playing the same scale, the same shape. Because you're gonna be you can play faster there because you know by heart that specific spot where you're not completely free to play all over the shape, uh, the neck, right? So um, believe me, this is very helpful. You know, so like F major and then just this, just keep doing this like every day. Of course, you can change the keys, you can change the pattern, you can change uh, the strings. F major, cool. So that's uh, the main thing. So again, uh, let me know if you guys is is if this what I'm saying is helpful for you or not. You know, just just type there like helpful or no, <laughs> you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, it is. All right. I will do it. I will do it. Uh, okay, incredibly helpful. Thank you. Very helpful. All right. You know, and then if you need to play some infamous thing, it's already there because he used a lot there. And you know, um, it's perfect, you know. I think I like Zach Wilde as well and uh, so, so many players. And then it helps you because, look, it's, 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 it's kind of a no-brainer, right? If you learn how to play the scales like this, and then you learn how to play the, you know, the boxes, you know, the shapes, your brain somehow is going to combine that. You, you know, you're a human being, you're intelligent, you can do it. So at some point your brain's going to, oh, I got it. So you, you see it, you know, that's why. But you have to practice like this and then like this. And then you're going to see the whole thing as one, right? And then you're going to be able to... Uh, <laughs> you're gonna practice like this and then of course you're gonna practice arpeggios you're gonna practice pentatonics and in the same way when you practice arpeggios let's say E major arpeggios you're not gonna only practice you're not uh, practice you're not gonna practice only the, the shape like this you have to practice you know, per string as well. And then, of course, get a major, E, E major. Right, so we start seeing everything uh, horizontally and vertically. Cool? Um, and then uh, Andreas was asking about the minor, the harmonic minor scale. It's going to be the same thing because one, once, I mean, the same kind of exercise. I'm just using the major scale because, you know, just because major scale, you know, make it easy, uh, easier to, 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 you know, to transmit the, the idea. But of course, you can play, let's say, get an easy. Um, Easy key here for um, harmonic minor. So the A minor. Is... So what is the, the harmonic minor? It's gonna be A, right? Starting uh, with A. A minor. A, second, minor, third. So whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step. And then the harmonic minor has this one and a half step. Now, that makes that uh, pagan sound, that sound that's very uh, characteristic. Right, so the same thing. Probably heard that in the in many songs from Ingrid Malmsteen. Right. right, so the pattern that I show. Now I have a difficult moment here, difficult passage, but it's the same thing. So we can practice. Stop it here. Right? Oops. Right, and then you start 
once you get it, you can like you can jump. You, after you see the whole thing, you can do. metronome absolutely necessary yes yeah well yes I mean metronome drum machine some a loop or something but I believe if you wanna um, I think when you have metrics if you have numbers it depends on different kinds of musicians different kind of people uh, for me it was very important to measure my uh, my development so it was very important. So let's say I get this here. So I, I have a way to measure that. So I can put a metronome and see like, right? I can see how fast this is. And then I can write down. Uh, and then I, I can see the next day if I can do a little bit faster, you know, and then in a week, and then maybe this is 100 BPM, and then in a month, it's 110 BPM. And I know I want to play a song that's 130, so I have a goal, I know where, where I am now, and I know like my steps to get there, to play that lick, to play that song. So I think helps a lot, because you, you know, in anything, you know, if you want to, if you go to the gym, you want to, you know, get stronger, it's good to know, okay, I can, you know, I have a, uh, 10 pounds, uh, 5 kilos weight of next month, I'm doing the, you know, 20 pounds, so you can see, like, uh, uh, your improvement, you know, you can, you can write down and can be, like, you, you can take notes of your weak spots, you know, uh, what kind of technique you, you need to develop because it's really not so good, you know, this kind of thing, so metronome is, gonna, is a way to measure, you know, if you want to lose weight, you need to, you know, Wait yourself. <laughs> you you need to count the calories or count whatever you're eating because that's the only way to to understand and then make make a uh, make a plan a program so you can you can uh, track uh, how you you're evolving or you know. So the same thing again, like the the guitar hex is where I show that and uh, all the time only metronome, only numbers, only numbers. And I know it might be boring. It might be not musical, but it's only an hour. And then you have the whole day. And if it's one hour too much, do it half hour, because it's like when you're, you're shaping your hand to play, you know, to play, <laughs> to play right. So that's what I believe. And then you have confidence to go on stage, to, you know, to do whatever you want to do, you know. It's not about playing fast. It's about, it's about to play what you want to play with confidence. And, clean and and right and, and be ready to any situation and then even if you, s you don't have the time to practice before a gig you know the way to practice so you you're ready for that you know so yeah so let me see you you, you guys where you guys are um, talking about here Right, so, so yeah, so um, I was talking a lot about that program. So I, I, I left here on the link because in, in the beginning of the year, I opened the first, the, first, uh, the first batch, the first group of students. And um, so then we stopped and now I'm, uh, this week, we're gonna, I'm probably gonna leave open for a few days uh, until you reach a certain amount, amount of students, maybe f around 50 students, 70 students, and then it's enough because then I can answer the questions, 
is not a crazy thing with like 860 people watching now. So it's, uh, it's a closed environment. Uh, so you can watch all the lessons, uh, many hours of how to practice. So I show uh, my pra practice for alternate picking, sweep picking, tapping, and legato. Yeah, and uh, hybrid picking as well. The five techniques. And uh, how I divide the hour and what I, what I practice. And then there's a lot of exercises there. there there's a lot of... Uh, um, not phrases or licks, there's some, uh, but it's more like exercise in how of the first approach to, to have your technique, you know, take your technique to the next level faster. And uh, don't, don't be there like playing the same thing forever because what's gonna happen, and you've probably have seen that, some guitar players, they, they play the same thing for years and five years, 10 years. So it's, it doesn't matter, it's not how long, how long do you practice, you know, it doesn't matter how many years you play guitar, it's how, how you practice. If you learn to practice, you will be ready to learn anything, you know, even to learn another instrument. You know, I, I started uh, playing piano when I was 28, like pretty late, and then I, I, I'm, it, not that I'm virtuoso on the piano, on the piano far from that, but I, but I'm able to play, I'm, I'm able to compose stuff, I'm able to have fun playing the, the instrument. I don't call myself a pianist, but I have fun playing it. And then it helps me a lot to, to, to play stuff, to compose, to, to, you know, to use a, the midis and the sequencing and stuff. But mainly to have fun with the instrument, because actually I, I prefer to play the real piano than the midi keys, you know. Like. But anyways, but... If you learn how to practice, if you learn, and you not only learn how to practice, but get the, understand the importance of discipline, and then you have a little bit of a discipline when you practice, you can play anything. You, you, you're not going to be afraid of learning a song. You're not going to be afraid of getting a gig or preparing to, to play something, because you know the way to be ready, you know? Of course, some stuff are super difficult. Some guys play amazing stuff because they're doing that. They're, they're, they found their own way to pr ways to practice uh, effectively, and then they can reach like amazing uh, technique or play amazing stuff, you know. So because they know how to practice, and then you dedicate time and knowledge, you know, expertise on how to practice. So I left the link here in the description, so take advantage now. You have some time now, I believe, to, at home to practice. To, and uh, so guitarhacks.com, go there, enroll before uh, the, the, this group of, uh, is full. And then you have to wait, I don't know when I'm going to reopen. I never know when I'm going to reopen. We opened uh, in January, beginning of January, and now I'm opening again now. Um, end of March, so I don't know when I'm gonna reopen. It really depends, maybe in three months or something. So now is the time for you to get there and practice. And I'm, I'm there answering the questions, and then uh, I, I do a specific live for the students. So then you go talk to me, like, because then it's gonna be like, a, a, like max 50 people, 60 people or probably less than, because not everybody can do be there at the same time. So, it's an opportunity, so we can talk more. Host work is God, yes. Uh, yeah, so then you can talk more there, inside the program. So, uh, waiting for you guys there. But anyways, I hope all this, I'm all, almost an hour here. I hope all, all this was very helpful Simple patterns. I didn't want to complicate because I want to have you. I don't know your level uh, So even simple things you can make it difficult because if you start playing in every uh, in, in, in the 12 keys, it's not gonna be easy to play horizontally a simple pattern in 12 in the 12 keys on six strings you know and if you want to play fast you're gonna see that the problem is not the technique, the problem is how to, 
to see the scales fast as well. So then you, you're practicing your technique and you're practicing your brain. And I believe in, uh, in those times, those crazy times, the best thing we can have is uh, something that we can go and practice and be focused on and then feel that we are evolving, that we are getting better as musicians, as guitar players. That's what I'm doing here too. And I want to share with you guys. So I hope this is... Um, I hope this is very was very helpful. But let me know again if you guys have any questions. And of course, I said playing the 12 keys, and then of course you could do the same for the modes, you know. And I'm gonna just to finalize the whole thing. I'm gonna read a little bit, and then I show a little bit how you could do with the modes. But maybe not another live can go deeper into that as well. Oh, wow, lots of. <laughs> uh, Okay, how I can combine pentatonics and I, I This for another live, if you guys don't mind, right? And uh, let me show uh, the same thing. Um, if I can show with the legato. Legato is the same thing. Yeah, let's do that. Great, so my sweet engage. Thank you, man. Um, uh, Connecticut. Yeah, let me know, uh, you guys, at Connecticut, Fortaleza. Um, Jesus, a lot of politics here. Come on. Um, so yeah, legato. Let's say, uh, um, what about this one? Another pattern. Same thing. So you practice your legato, and at the same time, you practice you know, uh, visualization in the C in the fretboard. So. Stop, transition. Stop, transition. And then, same thing here. If it's hard to start from here, because you can see the G here. So the G... It's here. Right? And I start on the third. And then hit the same. People are talking about politics and somebody said like Dave Mustaine <laughs> 2022 all right so yeah all right so um, anyways um, legato and then of course the, um, with the alternate picking and then just for us to finalize here like one hour live um, you guys hopefully not you guys are not tired 
And um, they have, man, so many comments, I, I got crazy here. So again, about the, the, the program, this one is in English, right? I'm putting here on the on the on the <laughs> on the chat the link, right? You guys just go there. I just was like putting a lot. <laughs> yeah, man, pure marketing. So, anyways, um, yeah. So, and take the time now. Take the time. Use the time now to to do something that is challenging for you. You know. Practice, like learn how to practice. That's what I'm talking about here. And then the same thing, like uh, if you're gonna play the legato, you're not gonna play, you know, like this, like you know, fingers all over the place and you're know, flying away from the fretboard. You can play, you learn how to practice and then you have pure control. Pure control. That's what I, I'm teaching there in this program. So many hours, actually many hours just to talk about how to practice. It's crazy, right? But uh, there's a lot of techniques. There's also techniques to improve your speed faster than just playing whatever. You know, just, okay, I'm gonna be playing and trying to be crazy fast. There are some techniques to make your, you know, your speed uh, evolve faster than normal. And with control, and uh, always clean, all right? So, um... Cara, vocês são chatos pra caramba quando eu olho política. Puta merda. Chato demais. <música> Thing that I promise just a, a quick uh, look how to how to use the modes so here we we have the Ionian right and then if you want to know another another major one the mixolydian would be so right the mix, uh, G mixolydian, G mixolydian would be the C major scale, but I don't think like this. I just think about, I, I think G mixolydian with the, which is uh, the same as the major scale, but the seven is a flat seven. So instead of this, so. The whole, you know, again, like six strings, 12 keys. But you're gonna say, Kiko, it's too complicated, or it's too much. But actually, once you in, un when you understand, it's easier. And then you can, uh, your brain is gonna uh, see those patterns, those relations between the, the notes, and then you can move around easy. You know, it's gonna be easy, easy. It's gonna be easy. But it needs some time. It needs some time. In the beginning is difficult, but then after it gets easier. That's we are human beings. We can we can learn anything. So yeah, that's the way to practice the modes. Again, like a piano, 
linear. You know, that's one way to practice. So I'm showing one way here because we have one hour. Like two patterns, one, uh, two patterns, one way to practice the scale horizontally. All right, so um, I hope it was good. Thank you very much. And, uh, oh, I freeze, okay, too bad. Anyways, thank you very much. And see you next time. What happened? Oh. oh. It freeze the camera. All right. Problems. <laughs> All right, so, good. We're back, we're back. Sorry about, about that. Anyways, uh, so I hope, I hope this was good. And uh, yeah, so have fun, get those ideas and go and practice. If you wanna take the, the course, guitarhacks.com, go there. And uh, it's gonna be great to have you there and then I can, you can watch several hours of those kind of things. And I wanna be there to answer your questions and do some specific lives for the students. All right, so, um, yeah, thank you very much. And have fun on this Sunday, beautiful Sunday. It's pretty late here, nine o'clock. Anyways, all right. Thank you, everybody, and see ya, bye.